Good morning and welcome to Second Congregational Church Beverly Mass. We are glad that you are with us. No matter where you are on life's journey, um, you are welcome here and you will have a church home here. And we hope that when we get back together in person that you will join us. Um, the announcements this morning, I just really have one announcement um, to let you know that Spirited Women will be meeting this Wednesday online from 6.30 to 8 p.m., so we hope that you will join us. Good morning. I would like to read an official call to meeting. At the call of the Central Board, a special meeting of Second Congregational Church will be held virtually by using a Zoom meeting with both online and phone options following the worship service on Sunday, February 14th, 2021. The business of the meeting will be one, to vote on a request by the Central Board to allow them to interview and hire a full-time interim pastor. This notice was read last Sunday and will be posted. Thank you. And now please join me in the call to worship. God of creation, we gather in gratitude and we give thanks for your amazing creation. May our worship join with all of creation's praising you according to its kind. Our opening hymn this morning is Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. This morning's opening prayer again will be prayed in unison. Please join me. Creator God, you make all things new, causing seeds to grow, buds to blossom, and fruit to ripen. So within each of us, seeds of kindness and the humility to live gently within the community of creation and to bring forth the fruit of your kingdom of love, justice, and peace. Amen. Now before the living God, let us confess who we are, confident in God's unconditional love. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God, we confess that we are sometimes overwhelmed by all of the turmoil around us. We admit that at times it just seems like too much. Help us to remember that you are as close to us as our own breath. Bind us together in community. Forgive us when we lose heart. In Christ's name we pray. Friends, God promises forgiveness of sin and fullness of grace. In Christ Jesus, you are forgiven. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. 
Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's scripture reading is from Psalm 96, verse 12. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Please pray with me. Creator God, be in my speaking, in our hearing, and in our hearts together as we ponder your word. That this message was just about completed, or so I thought on Wednesday of this week. But on Thursday morning, after my third sighting in three days of a red-tailed hawk, I wonder if the sightings are supposed to be part of the message this morning. On Tuesday, I was just about to drop my mom off at her house in Wenham. We had just returned from a trip to Gloucester the day after the storm. We had the blessing of getting to witness the mighty ocean displaying her power and beauty along the Gloucester coastline. The waves were huge, and along with many others, we marveled at nature at her most powerful. And just as we made our way to her house, a red-tailed hawk swooped from a tree and flew right over the car and landed in another nearby tree. I remarked to my mom, Mom, did you just see that? I was reminded in that moment of how the Native American people have for so long believed that hawk is a symbol of being on the right path, along with other things. So I made a mental note of how awesome it was to have just seen it. About an hour later, I was making my way back home to Danvers as I approached the traffic lights at Route 1A and Sawyer Roads when out of nowhere a red-tailed hawk flew right across the hood of my car and I watched it land in a nearby tree. Mental note number two, and a feeling of gratitude to witness this majestic bird so up close and personal again. Now fast forward to this Thursday. I'm driving toward a destination in Wenham and I'm thinking about different people at church about the sermon that I will preach, about how we're all connected, and about how little we really know about the mystery of God. When suddenly from a wooded area on Cedar Street, a red-tailed hawk, yes, number three, close encounter with a red-tailed hawk. And I felt a lump in my throat forming because I'm thinking that little old me once again has been blessed in a way that no words can adequately describe. And in the next few minutes, I decided that this is supposed to be part of the message that I'm giving you today. It's another example of how everything is connected. Our thoughts, our experiences, the natural world, our dreams, our mistakes, our everything is somehow connected all of it held together in the gentle arms of a loving creator. All connected, hawk, wind, water, power, thoughts, words, loss, illness, tragedy, and triumph, connected. Part of a wholeness that we probably barely tapped into. Now on to the rest of the message that I had prepared for today. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let the fields exult, I love that word, exult, in all that is herein. Then shall all the trees of the wood 
Sing for joy. Let the field be glad in everything which is in it. Let the countryside and everything in it celebrate. Then all the trees of the forest, too, will shout out joyfully. And then this version from the message, the Bible in contemporary language. This one says, let wilderness turn cartwheels. Let animals come dance. Put every tree in the forest in the choir. Now, I am not a Bible scholar. I did not study the Bible at the Chaplaincy Institute of Maine. But clearly, these words in Psalm 96 express a praise of God and all creation. And we could all use a little joy right now. Although cartwheels are out of the question for me as I close in on age 65. But just hearing those words, doesn't it make you happy and even joyful? Well, I'm not sure if you, sure if you know this, but here's something to be joyful about. This whole week, including today, February 7th, marks the celebration of World Interfaith Harmony Week. Now, interfaith harmony is a goal, if you will, of the peaceful coexistence of practitioners of various religions. So this week has been set aside for the focus of interfaith harmony. Interfaith refers to positive interactions and cooperation and respects between all religious and spiritual traditions. It also respects those people with no religious affiliation at all. Interfaith holds that there are many paths to God and that your path and that no path is as valid and worthy of respect as my path. One mountain, many paths was a phrase that was popular at the school I went to for chaplaincy. And so in honor of Interfaith Week, and in contemplating those joyful words about creation from the psalm, I thought it would be interesting to combine the two things. The psalmist is clearly pointing out the miracle of creation, the natural world. His songs, his words, they're joyful. Trees and the forest take center stage. So let's take a look at trees in the archetype of the tree of life. Trees are mentioned many times in the Bible. We certainly depend on trees for our very lives as much as we depend on soil, air, water, the very air we breathe. Actually, Nancy Rexford and I were talking the other day about how scientists have discovered that trees actually communicate with each other. The language they speak is through an exchange of pheromones and through their root systems. So one tree can actually warn others nearby about danger and possible disease. And there was so much more to this that you might look into yourselves. Look up trees speaking. Throughout almost all spiritual traditions, the natural world and trees in particular are revered. And the tree of life has become a popular and universal symbol. It stands for different things in different cultures and religion. The symbol of the tree of life looks different to different traditions, but almost universally, it appears as a tree with roots and branches connected. On my stole this morning, you will see many trees. <laughs> These are actually felt Tree of Life coasters that I found in my thrift shopping adventures. I'm going to leave some outside in a plastic container outside the church building near the front, red front doors at the top of the sanctuary. Please feel free to come by during the week and help, week and help yourself to a Tree of Life. But for now, let's take a look and see what different traditions have to say about the tree of life. Well, in Christianity, the tree of life is first mentioned in the book of Genesis. It's the tree that grows in the Garden of Eden. 
It represents eternal life. Some people who practice Christianity believe that it represents love, and others feel it is a symbol of freedom from sin. They believe that the tree in the garden had healing properties and that the fruit it bore granted immortality. Now, the ancient Celts, who were a collection of tribes from Central Europe, believed strongly that the symbol represented harmony and balance. They even held important meetings under a specific tree within their community, believing that it had almost magical powers. When the Celts would clear land, they would always leave one tree standing, and it was actually a a crime to cut it down. This is how fiercely they believed in its magical powers. In Islam, the tree of life is known as the tree of immortality in the holy book, the Quran. It is the tree from which Muslims believe that Adam and Eve ate after Allah told them not to. In Judaism, the tree sustains and nourishes all of life. In the Baha'i tradition, the soul is the tree of life. Each person must strive to live a fruitful life. In indigenous cultures, it is held that all creatures are our brothers and sisters. All things, even things we might consider inanimate, are connected. All things are connected. The tree of life is also known as the tree of peace. The fruits of the tree are gifts given by the creator. They include love, compassion, generosity, patience, wisdom, justice, respect, and humility. If we're speaking of the tree of life in general terms, it represents the interconnectedness of everything in the universe. It reminds us that we are never alone, that you and I are connected to everything else. We are in it together, just like the phrase we've often heard during this pandemic. The tree of life, life also represents the connections we have within our own families, and that includes connections we have to our ancestors. The network of branches re represents how our families grow and expand over many generations. Trees are also a universal symbol of growth and strength. They spread their roots deep into the ground and they gain stability. It starts out as a seed, then becomes a sapling, and eventually grows into a giant, strong tree. The branches of a tree can also symbol, symbolize our individuality. No two trees are exactly alike, just as all of us are unique in many ways. The tree of life is also a symbol of rebirth. Trees lose their leaves and can appear dead in winter, but we all know that when spring comes around, those same trees form new buds and leaves. This can remind us of fresh starts and new beginnings. The tree is also a symbol of immortality. Even as it reaches old age, a tree continues to create seeds that will carry on its essence. It lives on in new saplings. And then there's peace. Trees are known for creating a sense of calm and peace within us. Think of some of the most peaceful places you know, and chances are you're picturing a favorite tree, or a tree-lined path, or your favorite walking trail in the woods. Friends, may each of us find the joy of connectedness as we walk through this world. Like the trees of the forest, may we all find ways to sing with joy, knowing that each of us is a crucial part of something bigger than ourselves. You and I are a glorious part of the tree of life.
We really are in this together. Let us give thanks. And now I'd just like to close by reading a poem um, by a poet named Shailen Harkin. The poem is called Read the Fine Print. She says, Some days I awaken so certain of the world's goodness. This poem is a reminder for those other days when I need to convince my stubborn mind that all is still well. Let me present the evidence. Have you noticed all the fastidious care that went into pinning up so many stars to decorate the night sky? What did that? Who did that? In the way all of nature has a tidiness to it, even gnarled trees, even dirt? Or sit a moment and puzzle over the masterful origami of each flower and think, now what cosmic interior decorator chose that gold for those rolling hills? And before that, who thought up tenderness? Who is it that came up with all those colors? And what genius said autumn? My only simple conclusion, as I sit amazed at the pileup of gifts, is that, we're is that we're part of a great contract of goodness, and there's love written into every atom if you get close enough to read the fine print. Now it's time for our prayers, for our silent prayers, um, and um, the prayers that some of you have, which I, I don't really know them now, but um, whatever prayers you post online, we certainly will all keep um, those intentions in prayer. And I did learn that um, Peg Round's father-in-law, Bill, died last night um, from COVID. So if we could keep Peg and her family in our prayers. Now let's take a moment for silent prayer. Dear God, as trees are rocked, and shaken by storms and strong winds, so we find ourselves challenged and tested. We bring before you now our concerns and our worries. Steadfast God, the tree of life is the breath of life. Sustain us, we pray, and give us peace. The branches of the tree stretch out, sharing your abundance and love. Show us the opportunities to stretch out our lives and share your love with those around us. God, some of your trees bear fruit. We pray for those everywhere who do not have enough to eat. There are many struggling right now with food insecurity because of the loss of jobs, because of COVID. We hold all of those who are burdened with worry, fearing they do not have enough to eat. The roots of the tree give strength and endurance. And we thank you, God, for the strength you have given us to endure these difficult times. We give thanks for all trees, beautiful in their diversity. Guide us to take better care of the natural world and guide us to take better care of each other. Amen.
And so we gather, friends. We come from many places, differing in age, differing in orientation, differing in politics and belief systems. As we gather at this table, we discover that our differences are indeed things of blessing. The more difference we bring to this table, the more fully we experience the presence of the sacred in our midst. So come, beautiful children of God, just as you are. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we are about to receive this meal of love, of forgiveness, and of peace. We ask that you share your love, shine it into every corner of our hearts. As we share this meal, bind us together, even as we are still physically distanced from one another. Help us to see your grace at work in our lives. Amen. Now, friends, on the night before he was crucified, Jesus met with his friends in the upper room for a final meal. He took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Whenever you eat this, remember me, the bread of life given to all of you. And then he did the same with the cup, saying, This is the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink this, remember me, the cup of love and forgiveness for each of you. Generous giver, creator, creating God, we thank you for this meal of love and acceptance. Accept our thanksgiving and help us to grow in your love. Amen. Now the closing hymn will be For the Beauty of the Earth.
Now may the word of God take root in your heart, grow strongly in your life, and bear much fruit. And may the blessing of the Creator be with you and all of God's creation, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us.